Hello, welcome. In this short video, let us look at an example illustrating how to derive the impulse response from a system equation. We will also look at validating the result. So, given the following system equation, y of t equal to integral minus infinity to t e power minus t minus tau x of tau minus 2 d tau. So, this is the system equation. Now, we want to derive the impulse response and validate the result. So, in order to derive the impulse response, we have to use the impulse signal delta of t as input. That is, we replace x of tau minus 2 with delta of tau minus 2. Then, h of t is equal to integral minus infinity to t e power minus t minus tau delta of tau minus 2 d tau. So, by using the shifting property, this should be equal to e power minus t minus 2 for t greater than 2. That is the impulse response h of t is equal to e power minus t minus 2 for t greater than 2. So, this condition t greater than 2 may not be obvious. So, let us look at the unit step response s of t and derive the impulse response in order to understand this condition t greater than 2. The unit step response s of t is given by replacing the input x of t with u of t. That, that is by replacing the input with unit step signal, we can determine the unit step response. So, s of t is equal to integral minus infinity to t e power minus t minus tau u of tau minus 2 d tau. So, clearly u of tau minus 2 basically means that the signal is only valid after tau greater than 2. This is the tau axis. So, this is the unit step signal. It starts from tau equal to 2. So, this is equal to integral 2 to t e power minus t minus tau d tau. And obviously, this will be non-zero only when t is greater than 2 because there will be no overlap when t is less than 2. That is, if t is less than 2, then this signal will be basically outside this unit step signal u of u of tau minus 2. Therefore, this is non-zero only for t greater than 2, which is equal to e power minus t into e power tau and the limits are 2 to t and for t greater than 2. So, this is equal to e power minus t into e power t minus e power minus 2. Therefore, s of t is equal to 1 minus e power minus of t minus 2 for t greater than 2 and 0 elsewhere. So, this is the unit step response. Now, by taking the derivative, that is derivative of the unit step response will give us the value as 0 minus of minus 1 into e power minus t minus 2 for t greater than 2 and 0 elsewhere. Therefore, h of t is equal to e power minus of minus t minus 2 e power minus t minus 2 for t greater than 2 and 0 elsewhere. Thus, by looking at the unit step response, we can understand the condition t greater than 2. Now, let us look at the validation of this result. That is, we want to verify that by using this impulse response, we will get back the original system equation. So, for a linear system, the system equation is given by y of t is equal to h of t convolved with the input x of t, which is by definition equal to integral h of tau into x of t minus tau d tau. And since h of tau is equal to e power minus of t minus 2 for t greater than 2, the limits will be tau greater than 2. The limits are 2 to infinity and h of tau will be equal to e power minus of tau minus 2 and x will be t minus tau d tau. And this is the basically the reversed and shifted version of the input. So, this is the system equation. Now, we have to verify whether this is same as the original system equation. So, original system equation is given by the integral minus infinity to t e power minus of t minus tau x of tau minus 2 d tau. So, by simply using a change of variable by using t minus tau is equal to s minus 2, that is for tau equal to 2 implies that s is equal to t and for tau equal to infinity implies that s equal to minus infinity. So, the 
new limits are integral from minus infinity to t and tau minus 2 will be replaced by t minus s. So, this is e power minus of t minus s x of s minus 2 ds which is exactly same as the original system equation. Thus, we can validate the impulse response result. Thanks for watching.